I'm Corinne. I'm Thomas. <laughs> Good morning. Welcome to the Chill Spot. I'm Corinne and this is Drake. So as always, when you say good morning, I say it in my head. And just now, I thought, good morning, and welcome to CNA Fest. Pretty I soon. don't know why that must be on my mind. So. But pretty soon we will be saying that. I know, yeah. Mm -hmm. You get me running down the hall with a megaphone in the morning. Good morning, wake up, CNA Fest. Start knocking Six o'clock every morning we're there. Mm -hmm. I morning. stay up all night anyway, so... You can always knock on the door and say, good morning, housekeeping. Housekeeping. Here to fluff your pillow. <laughs> Get to the auditorium. Exactly. Here to snatch your pillow so you wake up. Wendell. <laughs> exactly. Make All right. Sure so today's Monday. Happy Monday, everyone. Yes. And um, today is Monday, but tomorrow is hairdresser appreciation day. And yeah, I have another little quote that I'd like to read for you. And it says, a wonderful person who touches more hearts than hair. I got to think about that one. A wonderful person who touches more hearts than hair. Mm -hmm. So they're saying a hairdresser changes more lives than they actually touch hair? Yeah. When I actually read that, it reminded me kind of like going into a bar and talking to the bar tender about your problems oh yeah yeah yes yeah i get that, it i get it that's how my mind was was working when i read it so here this is a big thing because hairdresser appreciation day maybe you're like mm -hmm. why are we talking about this this is called personal care so the hairdresser plays a huge part in a lot of our residents lives you will probably see so here we have our hairdresser she's probably going to do something like a permanent which tomorrow when you give this resident a shower as a CNA, you're going to help that permanent be successful or you're going to completely ruin it. Exactly. Way too often, we're not paying attention to the care plan. You know, they don't wash their hair. A lot of nursing homes have a list. Do not wash hair of this person. There's reasons for that. They pay a lot of money to get this stuff done to their hair. And then CNAs, I'm just going to say it, being careless don't pay attention and they wash their hair out. When you wash that resident's hair out that just got a permanent, they have to repay for that. So make sure you pay attention to the specifics of your residents. Right. And what are some other things that residents, I mean, and that's just, that goes, that show appreciation for your hairdresser. I'm going to retract a little bit, sorry. And if she's in your building, you have to face her. And that's what I would do with my CNAs. I'd be like, you washed it out, you go tell the lady. Yeah, so make sure if, you, uh, if you're taking one of your female residents down to take a shower, um, it's a good idea to have like a communication book. Yeah, and most you, places yeah, do. And if you don't have one, um, just reach out to the hairdresser or to the barber, whichever mm -hmm. one you have, mm -hmm. and see if you can get a schedule for that resident. Yeah. You know, and then try to help them out. If you know your resident is kind of difficult and has a hard time like leaning their head back in the in the wash bowl, yeah. just say, Hey, I know so and so is scheduled to have a hair hair appointment on this date and at this time. Do I need to wash this? Can I help you get this resident in here and you know and make it? And a I lot used smoother? to look at that as sometimes maybe saving money for the residents. They pay separate to get their hair washed and then to get it permed. If you have their shower the morning of and you're just in the habit of not washing their hair because they get a perm, so that's great. But their shower is scheduled the morning of their hairdressing appointment. Yes, communicate with the hairdresser and say, hey, can I wash their hair? Because then it's done. It's a service they're not having to pay for because you're doing it. Right. Right. And also make sure that you're not late for your residence appointment. Yeah. And then that way you're not having them, the resident, be upset that they're going to miss their appointment. You're not causing someone else to run late for their mm -hmm. appointment. So communication is, is a plus and it'll help everybody in the long run. So just some other things, you know, with care with a resident, what is their preference? Do they prefer the shower? Do they prefer the whirlpool? Do they prefer scented or unscented soap? That's a big one. With many 
many, many very passionate CNAs out there, they often want to bring their own shower bag. Mm -hmm. That's amazing, and I never want to tell a CNA no, but please check with your resident and make sure that's something they want to use. Maybe this resident just cannot stand the smell of this specific soap that you have. So you have to communicate with your resident. What is it they want? What is it they're used to? Uh, a big thing when you get in the shower, a typical question we've always asked if we are washing their hair, do you want a wash rag to cover your eyes? Right. We might not think of that because we don't do that at home, but we also don't have someone washing our hair. So just ask the resident specifics because personal care to them, we need to personalize the care to them. And that's what personal care is personalized. You can't go in and do the same thing for every resident on the hall the exact same way. Right. And one of, kind of like one of my pet peeves is for when I first started out being a CNA, you would have some residents that would be coming up to the dining room and their hair was not combed. Mm -hmm. it, you know, I mean, would you leave your, your home? And, um, you know, your yeah, hair that's or what, your teeth. That's what I'd brushed, ask the staff, you know? you know, would you leave your house without brushing your teeth or without combing your hair? Oral hygiene is a big thing with personal care that as a whole, this industry lacks on. Right. I can say every single building I've been in, they've had a problem with that. And I could guarantee you, I, well, let's hope you all brush your teeth. So right. why aren't we doing it to the residents? For one, it stimulates their taste buds and their glands in their mouth so they can produce more saliva. They don't have dry mouth all day. It stimulates their mouth so maybe they have an appetite. They want to drink stuff. We are hindering the resident by not brushing their teeth every day. We are. We are. And actually, um, I'm glad that we are talking about this because on one of the pages that we have, it was actually a question. One of the CNAs had reached out and said that um, how could she get the rest of the CNAs to follow through with their morning routine mm -hmm. as of brushing their hair and making sure their teeth and stuff. And some of the quotes um, and stuff that was given back to her was not very positive. Some of it was negative. Some of it was, well, I don't have time. Or we was running, running behind doing this. Or we were going to get yelled at for having them up to the dining room late. I guarantee you, if you have a resident that's going up to the dining room, if you explain your situation that you took a few extra minutes to make sure their dentures were, were in properly, or you wash their face, or you comb their hair, you're not going to get a corrective over doing patient care. Well, and I feel like CNAs as a whole, again, we've done a disservice to ourselves by eliminating those things on a daily basis. A lot of CNAs to meet these time frames, be to the dining room by 7.45, so you eliminated brushing everyone's teeth. Maybe you didn't wash your face. Maybe you didn't toilet them. So from a management perspective, they see, well, they have enough time. They can get there and they can be out there in time. They're not looking at everything you missed. So then you just set the standard for yourself. Yes, I can be out there by 7.45. And in their mind, they think all your work is done or you wouldn't be out there on time. So if you do the work properly and carry out every task fully and you're late, then you just explain to them why you're late. Mm -hmm. Eventually, they're gonna have to work with it some way to make it more time efficient so everything runs well together because when you become late every day, you're no longer late. That's the time you're going to get there because that's how long you need to get the task done. So start doing your task Obviously, you don't want to push yourself to be at the dining room two hours late every day just to be spiteful, but take care of your residents for sure, and then think about the time frames that you have to meet. Your residents come first. The time frames, in my opinion, come second. Right, exactly, and I know if I take the time to look presentable, that makes you feel good. Yes. You know, it puts that little pep in your step. It makes you smile a little bit, you know, wider. And just think about how the residents will feel. Mm -hmm. You know, family members won't be complaining about Amen. how their loved ones look like. So just take the time and um, do what's right and communicate with the hairdresser or the barber that's in your facility. For sure. Yep. yep. Take care of your residents. Personalize their care to them because you got to remember that it's their home. Exactly. And we will look, uh, well, first, thanks for watching today. 
And be sure to watch on Wednesday at 10 a.m. We're going to talk a little bit about fundraiser ideas, you know, seeing green, green as in money. So be sure to tune in and watch our episode on Wednesday at 10 a.m. And until then, remember that you matter.